Hello, IP friends. Welcome to episode 74 of IPC Read Podcast. If you haven't listened to the last episode about sports broadcasting, right, please go and listen to it. And if you haven't read my latest newsletter, please do. It's about the Balo and Bear Netflix dispute over the unofficial Bridgerton musical. But yeah, um, welcome to this episode where we will be discussing Web3 nfts blockchain and intellectual property and i have a guest with me today who is a fantastic um person she is uh, well known within this you know the web3 blockchain nft space and i've read a couple of her articles and write-ups and she is well grounded so i you know reached out to her and I'm like hi could you you know come up to my podcast and she said yes i was like oh my gosh but yeah guys you know that how we do it here we talk about everything intellectual property from copyright trademark patent industrial design trace equipment, plant variety and geographical indication so yeah i hope you learned something please get your pen and your paper and take down notes while i let my guest introduce herself ciao guys It's been the first episode. It's a pleasure having you um, come to us about your area of practice today. Of course, happy to be here with you. Okay, great. So, um, welcome everyone to today's episode. Uh, I'm going to let our guest introduce herself and tell us what she did. So, over to you. Can we meet you? What's your name? Where are you based? And how did you get into the practice? Okay. So, my name is Ileana Torres. I am an attorney in Chicago right now. I have been practicing IP law for the last six or six years now. And I am actually focused right now on the blockchain, emerging technology, and NFT space. So, all encompassing Web3. I entered the space through um, NFTs, really, um, as a collector. My husband was buying a lot of cryptocurrency at the time, and he introduced me to cryptocurrency. And then I kind of pivoted to buying a lot of NFTs and entering a lot of communities. And a lot of questions started kind of flooding in this space about IP rights and the intellectual property laws surrounding NFTs. Um, so that's how I entered the space. It kind of just went from just practicing IP law in general, Web2 matters to um, Web3 issues and NFT uh, foundations for the world as how it applies to the law and how the new emerging tech is being utilized and how we're applying the law to that. Wow, that's, that's inspiring. Um, can you just, like explain to us what the relationship between like IT, um, blockchain, NFTs, metaverse, and all the other emerging tech that are coming up out there. Yeah, of course. So, um, intellectual property law is 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 taken usually ar- similarly around the world, and it's the protection of people's creations, creativity, and um. A lot of their, so just to break it down a little bit further, it's not just the protection of arts, but also the protection of brands. So that's when we kind of break down intellectual property law into the major subsets of, of intellectual property. And that is normally what is a trademark, with it, which is the association of a good or product or service to a specific brand or, or mark that consumers normally associate to that. And then we have the copyright, which is the protection of the arts, the creations, music, anything that uh, that's placed in a tangible means. Uh, and then we go into patents, which is the utility-based protections. So anything that you create that has some sort of utility, um, innovation, that sort of uh, kind of protection goes under patents. So that's what intellectual property law is. So now when you think about it, it applies to new and emerging technology because a lot of it is utilizing the intellectual property of others or to create this new kind of um, projects. And a lot of the times we kind of just misunderstand that this Web3 is not 
doesn't really have any legal, legal ramifications, but really the law applies equally to Web3. The only difference is that we're learning how to apply these laws to this new and emerging technology. Like, what is the impact of you know using blockchain, NFTs, or metaverse for creatives? Like, what do they really need to look out for? You know, do they just jump right into it because that's like what is viral or the trend right now? What would you advise a creative to do? Um, I think right now we're still in the exploration phase, so I don't think we're fully. I don't think anyone's really fully understood where we're going with the technology, but I do think it has the capability of allowing a lot of creators and innovators to kind of create and, and, and develop new solutions for current problems. So, or not, not just art, but also kind of creating solutions for existing problems that we could maybe solve with the, use of um, blockchain. So I think there's a lot of positive, obviously with everything that's new, um, similar to what happened during the, the inception of the web, the regular web, web two, is we're gonna have a lot of bad actors at the same time. So we kind of have a mix of a lot of people with a lot of really good ideas and then some few who are also going to try to kind of monopolize and monetize it in a negative way. But um, I think that overall, the technology is apt for a lot of creativity and a lot of innovation. And I think it could, could really um, revolutionize the way we do things now. So I, I'm very, I'm very, um, I'm very positive as to where we're going with the technology. Hmm. So we know that when it's really interesting property you have issues around authorships and ownership and you know commercializing and monetizing your intellectual property right? what are those ip rights that are present in the blockchain space and with the nfts the metaverse the web3 um what rights do an individual have when it comes to this i think it really depends so blockchain is just really kind of like a a, a a ledger where transactions get recorded. That's really in a, in a very simple way kind of to explain. So it depends on what you're using the blockchain for and whether that's to create NFTs. So NFTs are really just more contracts that uh, using blockchain that are gonna be recorded in that blockchain. So when you have, it, it depends on what you're creating or what you're buying, depending on what angle you, you take it from. But really, all intellectual property rights are applicable to the blockchain. So whether that's creating something that's new with a new technology, then you have a patent, where that's creating a brand that utilizes an NFT that points to a specific image, then you, you have uh, and you have copyright image, image protection on that image, so then you're licensing it, so then you have a lot of the uh, copyright laws applicable to it, and then you have potentially trademark laws if you utilize that too to associate it with a brand or a product or a service. So it, it really just depends on what the creations are. Right. So how do you then own an IP in the metaverse or um, an NFT? How does ownership you know, take place? How can I say, oh, I am the actual owner of this work in the metaverse. I am the owner of this NFT that I bought from XYZ. Well, it depends on what you mean by the metaverse? So if you're you're defining metaverse as a virtual reality world in which there's a lot of this, for example, like Sandbox or Decentraland, they have their own terms of use. You're basically entering a, a Web3 virtual reality embedded kind of um, reality space, basically. It's kind of just like, it's kind of like a third dimension of the Web2, but really there's the same laws apply to that. So you have the platform that's decentralized, they have terms of use. So you first figure out whether what, you know, what rights do I have if I use this land? Um, and then in regards to like other things that live in those lands, and, and if that's what you're regarding as the metaverse, then it depends on what, where, where are you getting it from? Or if you're creating it yourself. So if you're creating an NFT, then you deconstruct the NFT kind of looking at it like if it was a house. So who owns the land? 
who owns the the building, the components that built on it, and then who owns the rest of the things that live inside the house. Because that's essentially like you have to break down that NFT into smallest components. So who who created, who developed the contract that is going to go in the, in the blockchain? And then what rights does that person have? Is, the, is that token that's created through a smart contract pointing to something that is an, uh, a creation of art? So who created that art? So then we have to figure out who. So it, it really is kind of like the, the basic components of the NFT have to be broken down. And it really is very similar to how you would get a contractor to build your house. So you need to go look at, do I need a carpenter? Do I need a plumber? Do I need, so in what rights does each one of those people have? And at what point does that get transferred to you as the owner of that specific asset? Um, it can get real, close, but it's, it's um, and that's why we're all kind of learning as we grow in this space. One of the, I think this is like the most controversial um, case as relates to NFTs and, you know, the metaverse. What are your thoughts on the metaverse thing case? I know I saw... I think I saw a post where it said Hems was, uh, you know, just launched a product in the metaverse. How would that impact the ongoing case uh, with Ross Chow? What are your thoughts regarding the case? And Wh- what which the case? Oh, I'm sorry, you I misheard you. Yeah, what was the, the case? Me- I'm the sorry. The meta Becking case. Oh, case the meta Birkin case. Yeah. Um, my yeah. thoughts on the case. Um, I think I don't. I don't know how strong of an argument does the infringer have in this in that case only because they're using um first amendment defense saying that it's basically commentary and they have fair use to comment on it but the fact that they monetized it the fact that they 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 infringed on the trademark they didn't have to use any of the trademarks they kind of just um didn't really kind of take any dissimilarities in the creations and how much they raise through those sales. Um, I, I lean towards that's not a very strong argument and I think there still was trademark infringement. But again, I don't know how the court is going to look at, uh, at that. But um, Hermes actually just filed for trademarks themselves for the metaverse and metaverse products. So I don't think that, I think that that's actually a pretty strong indication that the previous trademark even if it's not if the infringement is not just based solely on that trademark that that was already registered the zone of expansion of that specific company will probably lead to still a trademark infringement even if they were not intending to enter into the metaverse at the time that the infringement takes place fantastic so i like the fact that you talked about monetization so i just wanted to find out from you what would you say is the best monetization model for creatives or inventors looking to go into the metaverse or explore um, the NFT industry? Mm. Um, I would say it just depends. I would I wouldn't look at the metaverse and Web three as a way to monetize further. I think I would look at it as to how can I bring innovation to a space? How can I bring newer technologies? How can I bring solutions? How can I um, bring my art if I'm an artist? How can I how can I expose my art and get people to to really enjoy what it is to me to be an artist and to have direct contact with your fan base? I think that's a very strong point for music NFTs. So like, I think that NFTs allow a musician or artist who are developing anything that is in the music space to connect with their fan base more directly without so many middle ground in between. Uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't look at it as a way to monetize. I would look at it as a way to expose what you're doing because you love what you're doing. And maybe that's idealistic. I, I think big brands are definitely going to enter into a space. And I think the angle for monetizing is truly a marketing angle and exposure because I think blockchain because it's so worldwide used and it gives exposure worldwide to anything you do really is a really strong angle to create uh, customer loyalty and customer fan bases.
you think blockchain can be used to track IP infringements in the virtual space? Um, if yes, how can this be done? Mm, I think um, there's already some exploration on how blockchain could track and find solutions for for copyright tracking systems as well as trademarks, especially when you have licenses, sub-licenses, and there's transfers of very uh, strong and old brands. Um, and those brands kind of, the trademark, at least for the trademark side, because the trademarks can last as long as you're using it, there's no real expiration uh, in difference with the, um, in comparison to copyrights. I think with the technology that we have with blockchain, tracking trademark assignments, tracking trademark, uh, how they get passed down from company to company might be a good way to to kind of have that transparency because anyone can look at the blockchain, what's recorded in it. So it might be a good utilization of the technology to track any of that. And it's especially because we have such a worldwide use of trademarks and worldwide use of copyrights. But I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're even near there. I think we're still in Web 2.5. I think we need to get more people to understand what Web 3 is, what the technology is bringing before we kind of start placing solutions using the technology. So once we have more people just really fully using it without knowing they're using it, I think that's where we're going to start seeing a lot of the changes happen utilizing um, the technology. Um, what would you say are the available IP mechanism for um, platform as service or um, a software as service product? In regards to so software in mechanisms for so software as a service in relation to either the NFTs or the Web three, the metaverse, yeah. or platform as service. Especially as regards to brands wanting to delve into this area and everyone contributing their own research to this conversation. Um, I think we're seeing that a lot with open source platforms. Mm. So, and I think the route we want is an open source platform just because it allows people to build on things that others have built already. Um, so, as far as um, software as a service, I think we're going to see a lot more decentralized open source places where people can go and build more on what's already being created. Um, but other than that, there's a lot of platforms existing and being created day by day that are trying to facilitate the entry into NFTs, facilitate the way that they get bought, sold, transferred. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of space for, for newer platforms that bring more value to the community my question is have you encountered or come across any cyber security issues when dealing with blockchains or metaverse platforms um not really issues so just like legal issues or like in terms of you know data access um security of the platform um, oh okay so in security and privacy yeah um i mean i think for the most part what's in the um in the forefront of the space so the news kind of covers all the hacks for example so a lot of the hacks that have happened that exposes some vulnerabilities that some blockchains may have that always these um, may need to be worked out. But I, I honestly, I think we have those vulnerabilities now in Web 2 also. It's not, it's not native to Web 3. So I think the news are covering a lot of these vulnerabilities with the blockchain a lot more because it's such a new area. Um, as far as privacy, I think there's more concerns because it is a transparent ledger. So anyone can see transactions. Anybody can see what happens in that ledger. Um, so I would say that that's more of a concern, I would, I would think, and that we're gonna eventually going to see a lot more privacy laws applied to how this blockchain gets, um, gets uh, spread in use as far as uh, people get on board and, and start using it.
who would you say are like the major stakeholders in the metaverse NFT um, world? And is there a need? Do you think there's a need to regulate um, the metaverse in NFTs, Web three, um, blockchain? Um, is I think. Need to... Yeah. So um, it depends. I think that we have to have a balance. I think we to regulate to protect consumers, but. In doing so, I think we also need to make sure we're not halting innovation. So, I'm sure, I do think that we need what we need is guidance. So, how are we going to treat these digital assets? And once we have that answer, then we could better kind of advise. But I think there needs to be a balance between allowing innovators to innovate, obviously, and then um, regulation not pausing that. And at the same time, having consumers protected. So you are based in the U.S. You, do you, does the U.S. currently have laws that are equipped to deal with disputes um, within the metaverse and around NFTs as relates to image rights, trademark issues, privacy issues, um, ownership, and you know, any other dispute that may just come out of the space? Um, there's nothing, the, the existing laws are the same, okay, so nothing has really changed. The only thing we're waiting for is guidance from the courts, so like the metaverse in this case, to see what they're, how they're treating this and um, the digital assets. Yeah. And then the other guidance we need is from the Securities and Exchange Commission and to see if they're going to treat digital assets as a commodity or a security. So those sort of regulations are more on the financial aspect of the NFTs and where they're going to be looked at as a sort of form of revenue. But um, but I don't think that we're going to see that for at least a little bit of time just because they're moving a little bit slow. But intellectual property-wise, I don't think we're going to change the intellectual property laws around them. I think we're going to learn how they're going to apply to them based on the court's application of the laws to it. But I don't think we're, and that maybe I, I just don't see them changing the laws around it. Great. So what 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 would you say are like the opportunities, um, in the metaverse for lawyers, for developers, for creatives, for inventors? I think it's huge right now. I think we need more people who understand it first, who get really immersed in it and then start adv- uh, advising it. Because I think you need to understand the technology and really the power of that technology before you want in it to move forward with anything they want to create. So there's a lot of opportunities, especially for developers. I would say the priority right now will be developers who understand how to code Solidity. So a lot of the, or major blockchains, not just Solidity, but Solana Network, all the other networks that, that are kind of really growing at a really rapid space. So we need developers for that. A lot of the creativity comes from the development side. So a lot of uh, innovators need to come in the space. And obviously we need people to finance this thing. So a lot of venture capital is gonna come into the space if we see that happening soon. Um, it's already somewhat happening. And then the lawyers, we're obviously gonna have to understand what it is that we could um, what the technology is doing so we could properly advise. So there's a huge amount of uh, space for everyone. Great. So do you necessarily need to learn how to code to be part of this? Revolution? I'm sorry? Do you need to learn how to code? No, to you don't. To- you know, no. part of the method. <laughs> Not at all. But <laughs> it helps, GDP. but it... So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what are your views on, you know, I know you mentioned about open source work, but what are your views on open source work, um, creative commons, do we need to have, like, a policy or guidelines that anyone delving into this area would just, you know, work with it and then we avoid, you know, disputes that may want to arise IP related dispute or any other kind of dispute that may want to arise from this? Mm, I 
I'm going to say uh, I don't have a very solid opinion yet because there's a lot of projects testing the waters on how they monetize their brands using a CCO license. And I don't know yet how that's going to turn out. So I don't, I, I have opinions. I don't, I don't love CCO licenses. I don't, but a lot of this, the people who are kind of exploring the ideas of what that would look like, they may have something that may actually work out. So I, I don't want to say something that then later on I change my mind on. Um, but I would say that right now, there's a few, how you structure a license really. Yeah, I was asking what trends uh, within the NFTs metaverse that you've seen this year that were not present last year. So, I think the the space is growing very rapidly, and the innovation is growing with it. So, as far as opportunities that that come with it all kinds I think you could be and again I think that if it goes back to web 2 like you need the same kind of structure you need a marketing manager you need a community developer you need so it doesn't really stray away from that as much so I would say that there's all kinds of jobs and options for people who want to enter it from a from an employment perspective and then from the perspective anything that your mind can think of you could possibly try to develop it using blockchain do you have any final words on this area as regards, you know, NFTs, metaverse, blockchain, IP? Final words from you, and then you tell us how we can reach you if we have further questions. Just anything yeah. you have to share. Yeah. So I think that um, I I wouldn't just don't discount something that because it's new and it's scary. I think that we need to get in that position of curiosity and just learn all we can about the space, how it works, how it operates. Um, and and I, we need to instill that curiosity into more people so that they can understand what they could create with the blockchain. So um, I, I love the space. I think that we're heading in a direction that this is going to become mainstream, maybe not as soon as we want it to, but it definitely will. And there's a lot of development happening as we speak, and I don't think that's going to be stopped anytime soon. So I would say that explore, ask questions, get immersed into a space, even if it's daunting and scary at first. Uh, there's so much more to learn, and then there's so much more that we could create. And nobody's an expert. Not, uh, none of us are experts. None of the lawyers working in this space are experts. There's really no expert in something so new. So the more you ask questions, the more you try to understand the way things operate, the more we can become experts. So eventually we will have experts, but not right now. Um, but yeah, I, I love the space. I think that if anyone wants to get immersed in it, we have plenty of resources in this space that are often offered to anyone who wants to learn more. So feel free to reach out with uh, questions or uh, any kind of interest in this space and I can connect you with people who are educating daily. Thank you. Your social media handle, how can we find you online? Where's the best place to catch you? Um, Twitter or Instagram. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time on Twitter spaces. So if you're not familiar with Twitter spaces, they have live streams. So we do a lot of conversations live. Uh, and that, that would be the easiest way to kind of catch me and be able to ask me some questions. And my handle on Twitter is at Eliana, so E-L-I-A-N-A, -A, my first name, underscore E-S-Q. Uh, and you can find me there and feel free to ask any questions. That's my same handle for Instagram. So if you want to reach out on Instagram, I could definitely um, respond to your DMs on Instagram as well. And any, any, anything else that you feel f you have questions about, just um, email me. My email is also in my Instagram and my Twitter. So you could just click on the link and it takes you right to it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I no worries. A... Thank you. Yeah. This was fun. Uh, yeah, this was fun. Um, yeah. Hey guys, so we have come to the end of today's episode. If you learned something, please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. 
my podcast also share with your loved ones and if you want more um, content on nft web3 metaverse please send me a message at ipseriesinfo at gmail.com or at ipseries1 or ipseries underscore with underscore reader so yeah thank you so much for listening and see you in the next episode bye